This is Keyshawn Rains, the host of Working Title with Keyshawn Rains, where amazing things happen. A series of past the collection plate style conversations with a Creole, queer, femme, yogi, mom, coach, author, and of course, podcast host. With a nomadic soul, a quirky sense of humor, and an activator of empowerment. These conversations are just a chance for me to speak on ways to be mindful in a mindless world. Stories are shared, folks are empowered, inspired, and impacted to be more phenomenal versions of themselves through simple conversations about complex sh- like love, life, and the pursuit of being real. Thanks for listening. So what makes these episodes unique is that they were recorded at the height of the quarantine. And years from now, we'll look back and be like, remember when there was a quarantine? Remember we were locked up in our houses for three or four months and we couldn't go outside because we're afraid of a big old scary virus? Remember that? Remember that? Well, I kept recording the podcast and decided to archive these episodes for later when the quarantine was over, which I think is now. So keep in mind, some of these might be a little wonky. The audio quality might be a little off, but I still think the conversations are valuable and worth listening to. So here is an episode from the Wona Quarantine, also known as COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus, also known as that one time at band camp when we weren't allowed to go outside for half of a year. Enjoy. Hello there. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Glad you were able to connect with with no issue. Great. That's good. <laughs> Before we get started, I just want to give you my little spiel that I give everybody, which is, um, sure. you know, this podcast is meant to feel very much like just a natural conversation between friends. Um, I like to guide the conversation with some open-ended questions, and then there's a segment towards the end of the conversation where I play a little game called complete the sentence and the intention is just to kind of you know give you the space uh to share a little bit more about yourself with the listeners while also you know connecting on I think a topic that we can both uh enjoy which is mindfulness so yeah (laughs) so so we will um go ahead and dive right in I'm going to give you the mic, so to speak, and give you a chance to introduce yourself to the listeners, telling us your name, where you're from, and what you stand for. Sure. So, hi, uh, my name is Hollis Cam, and I am from New York, and I live actually in New Jersey, in Irvington, New Jersey. And I am... A, a life and leadership coach um, who focuses on self-love and body image and um, and confidence. Mm. Self-love, body image, and confidence. So tell me what led you in the direction of exploring a profession that embodies those, those things, which I find to be extremely important. <laughs> sure, sure. So Actually, it was um, my 40th birthday, Mm -hmm. um, and I decided to go to um, an El Brujo, is what I'll I'll call it. Mm -hmm. Um, I say El Brujo, um, aka a witch, but really an intuitive counselor, Mm -hmm. Uh, so somebody who does kind of energy work, and and walked in a room and had a a lovely conversation, and he was like, you know, you're have you ever thought about, you know, coaching? Mm. And I said, hmm, I said, well, no, not really. Um, I know, you know, reading it in a lot of self-development books that, you know, coaching works, et cetera, but never thought about it. Mm -hmm. Um, And at um, at that time, and I'm still doing human resources, um, I definitely did coaching as part of a profession, but I've never really thought about it just as, okay, let me pick this up. He said, maybe you should think about that. Mm. So did a bunch of research about coaching and, definitely coming from like, oh, you know, coaching is that woo-woo kind of California (laughs) thing and decided, and then as I was doing research and I said, no, no, not really. You know, this is definitely something that I want to get into and definitely something that, um, you know, everyone 
should at least at one point in their life have a coach, right? For mm-hmm. accountability purposes and and um, and other. So um, it wasn't really until my coaching journey mm-hmm. is when I, because um, so my coaching journey, meaning getting certified, it was about a year and a half process. Mm-hmm. And through that process and through de- talking with the coach, it, I definitely um, saw that that yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, issues that I wasn't dealing with, mm-hmm. um, and and I needed to start it somewhere and to start from really love and really self love, and that's kind of how it started. Where I'm like, you know, there's a lot of people walking around here with so much pain and not really understanding what self love is, and let me focus on that. Um, and then with body image, just for growing up, growing up, just not you know loving my body at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so like yeah, maybe I should focus on that too, you know, not for, for right. myself and also for others. And right. and then I got into like the whole body positivity movement and et cetera. So that's a whole other mm-hmm. um, conversation that we can have um, mm-hmm. if you want to. <laughs> no, I, and I thank you for that because I I think that you touched on something which I think is really valuable, which is most I would say most people who feel led to step into the role of a coach, you know, or a healer or a practitioner you know, specifically in like the spiritual community or light working community, we typically start off by coaching ourselves. You know what I mean? By, (laughs) by really looking at, well, what do I need to feel better? Because I want to be able to share things that I've actually experienced, not just like researched and read about and assessed, but things that I've actually experienced in my real life that have made an impact and have made a difference for me. And so I love that you, focus your intentions and your attention on things that you actually could benefit from, you know, Mm -hmm. self-love and body image are all foundational elements of a sense of confidence. You know what I mean? How we feel about ourselves in our bodies, how we feel about our bodies, how we care for our physical bodies has a huge impact on how well we present, you know what I mean? And how, comfortable we feel when we're presenting no matter what you know that that looks like and so yeah. I find it I I find it uh, enjoyable I guess to see so much body positivity showing up in places like social media and even in mainstream so media you know different body types are being represented by like major athletic brands now and you know this idea of really just embracing the body that you're in whether you have goals to transform it or you're happy with it exactly the way that it is, just to embrace it, you know, yes. as 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 you are, you know. Yes. So I think that's really cool. Totally, totally. It's you know, it's it's yeah. it's really about loving the body, as you said, loving the body you're in now, mm-hmm. and every step of the way, no mm-hmm. matter what ability or size or age or flaws or any or any of that. It's really mm-hmm. taking the time to really love and connect and and um, appreciate and celebrate, you know, the body. So you mentioned that you were working in human resources around the time that you started coaching. How yep. did you pick up, how, how do you juggle those two very different worlds? Or maybe they're not that different, actually. <laughs> they're both dealing with people. So. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. Like? <laughs> actually, they're not that different um, at all. Yeah. Um, especially when dealing with people and definitely when, uh, I mean, it all depends on which aspect of HR you're looking at. So there's the, mm. of course, the policy, the punitive aspect of HR. Right. And then there's right. the, pe- the people building, right? Um, okay. uh, performance building of HR. And I would say this would definitely, or coaching falls in the performance building, you know, of, of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and what, what we decided to do at work is um, like offer coaching to any new hires um, that, wow. that, uh, that come on board. Um, because, you know, for some people, it is a transition of moving from, or from, you know, one job into another or their first job. Um, mm-hmm. and also whenever someone is promoted also, of, um, giving them a coach as well for about three to six months through that transition, because, um, you know, being a, an employee uh, or fellow, having fellow employees, and then now you're, you're managing them, mm-hmm. Um, is mm-hmm. can totally be a, a huge transition. So that's one. That's one of the things that we decided to do is like you know what, let's use this. And actually, three three of us decided to go through the 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 program through CTI, which is Coactive um, mm. Training Institute. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
that's actually pretty amazing. I don't think I've had, I've ever had a job that ever offered me uh, like personal development or coaching, except for when I worked for Apple, when I worked for Apple, which was years ago, oh. part of the onboarding process was weeks of personal development. And it was actually something that may like continue to be a part of our ongoing training as we, you know, move through different roles within the company. And it was actually even on our schedule that there was a mandatory period of time every day that we were meant to take for personal development. So whether we, nice. you know, listened in on like a pre-recorded, you know, meditation or something, or we took a walk outside, mm -hmm. or we learned a little bit more about, you know, best practices for wellness and things like that. So that was the only company that I ever worked for that actually did take the human element of human resources and make sure that it <laughs> stayed in there, like you said, beyond just like the punitive and, you know, we're writing you up because you're late for work again or something like that, but actually really pouring into developing people. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, if you had to describe like your target client, your favorite type of person to work with, what, what is that person? Like? What, what are they about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I were to target, I would say an emerging leader. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't matter age, um, but definitely an emerging leader. So someone who, it's like, okay, you know, uh, I, I want to take the next step into, into whether it being a manager, whether if it's um, even starting their own business or, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, moving into, um, you know, the C-suite. I think I would say that's my favorite because that's where they're hungry <laughs> for, for uh, to really dive deeper into themselves. Um, right. That's one. Also, two, um, I would say an ideal client. Um, just because I, I focus on self-love and, and body image and, and such. Mm -hmm. So it's also like it's it's helping them move them through their confidence as well. So that emergency, mm -hmm. emerging leader, excuse me, that um, mm -hmm. just needs a little more push, a little more um, help and support um, with mm -hmm. their confidence and their confidence with self and getting into their body. And I think that's important that we forget to, and you mentioned this earlier, but we forget to really to... Um, like the mind is, is one thing and also the body is another mm -hmm. and they're connected mm -hmm. and it's really getting into both that really shifts and changes people. Yeah, I agree. I think that's where the term mindfulness has made its way into like everyday language, you know, for some, there was a time when the practice of mindfulness was something that, was only spoken about in certain communities, you know, the spiritual community, the mm -hmm. California community <laughs> that I'm, you know, a part right? of, uh, you know, the yoga community and all that hippity dippity, you know, magical shit. <laughs> you would hear mindfulness, you know, in that space. And I know there was specifically a moment I remember going to just the doctor's office, just my regular clinician mm -hmm. and sitting in the waiting room and there was a big poster up in the waiting room that said, be sure to ask your physician about our mindfulness services that we offer. Mm. And I was like, since when are we offering these? Nice. Star? You nice. know what I mean? Like, where'd this come from? But I was so impressed. You know, I was so impressed because it let me know that in a sense, there is a bridge that's starting to build between these practices that kind of go beyond the physical, you know, like you said, there's the physical body. And then of course there's the mind body in a sense. And I think that when people start to recognize that one cannot really flourish and thrive without the exactly. other also flourishing and thriving. And so what would you say are some mindfulness practices or things that you have experienced or implemented in your life that help you to, maintain that sense of mindfulness as you move throughout your sure. day? Sure. Uh, first is breathing. <laughs> um, really mm -hmm. focusing on breathing. And, 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 and you do this um, actually in your, in your pause, mm -hmm. right? I'm um, taking a moment mm -hmm. of just, let's just take a, a breath and take an intentional breath, right? So um, mm -hmm. getting, so in the, taking that deep breath in, pausing for a moment, getting it, like where in that body are you, you need to kind of focus that energy in, and then really mm -hmm. um, sighing on that deep breath out. Because um, that really just shifts the body and moves the body and, re and, re and mm -hmm. just releases what's ever there. Um, so that's one. And also, too, with, with mm -hmm. breathing, like if you do 11 deep breaths 
um, at a time. Mm -hmm. um, it actually gets you grounded and it focuses you in the present. Um, so yeah. that's one. Two is meditation. Um, I, I remember mm -hmm. that was a hard thing for me to get into. Um, uh, okay. I thought meditation, like you had to just like totally keep your mind empty and clear. And, and I'm like, I can't do that shit. <laughs> I can't do that. You're like, I don't even, I'm from New York. I barely exactly, sleep as exactly. it is, let alone take exactly. a break and just breathe and close my eyes. Nope, nope, no, no, wasn't, yeah. wasn't doing it, wasn't doing it. And then it was um, working with, with one of my coaches. Um, she was like, you know, let's just focus on just meditation. Like, let's, let's do this. And the idea is to, um, and what helps, I would say, is guided meditation. I would say those of you who are like, mm -hmm. I don't understand, I don't know what, get into guided meditation. Mm -hmm. Do three minutes, mm -hmm. do five minutes, you know, ten minutes. Um, let's start with even five minutes. Do med guided meditation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and doing it consistently, right? So mm -hmm. you can say, oh, I'm going to do it every day I wake up or every day that I, I go to bed or every day in the, in the, in the afternoon. And in the beginning, it's hard. So it's like, okay, where can you fit in five minutes in, of the day, wherever it is? And definitely, mm -hmm. you know, there's some guided meditation. There's some apps out there. You can go on YouTube. You can even ask um, Alexa as well, you know, to uh, for, for guided meditation. So um, do, just doing that and doing it over and over and over yeah. again. And then what happens is, an, and like during the meditation, your mind is going to go elsewhere. It's normal. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And it's okay when it mm -hmm. does and just remember, okay, I need to focus back on what the person's saying or focus on my breathing, right? And that's mm -hmm. the thing. It's like, okay, just, you know, using that muscle, training that muscle to then eventually get to a space where then you're able to then change and shift from guided meditation to just music or, the, or even just silence. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I agree. I am actually at the very beginning of a vir virtual meditation course Ooh. that I launched just last week. I like I launched it last week. It sold out in five days Ooh. and we're in day two of 14. And it's um it's a it's a deep dive at an accelerated pace, oh, nice. <laughs> which I kind of like. That's how I like to introduce new concepts is like I'm just gonna push you in the deep end of the pool and see what happens. <laughs> That is a tactic. See what happens. I'll be here. I'll be here, you know, to save you, of course. But I can't let you tiptoe right, right. and do shit. I need to push you all the way in and let you find your buoyancy and, you know, right, and you're right. good. Because, um, you know, sometimes everybody learns differently, but that that's always been my my method because sometimes when, you know, when you give someone too much time to critique and analyze and assess something new, all their resistance, all their buts, all their what ifs start to come mm -hmm. up versus saying, let's take this dive, let's That's go true. in. And I actually started during this, you know, COVID Corona time that we're in. Um, I started doing daily meditations on Instagram live, nice. just a quick, you know, 30 minute jump on here. Let's do some breath work. Mm -hmm. Let's do some, you know, mindful direction and then a guided meditation. And I got such great feedback from it. And people were sending in donations of varying oh, amounts. Nice. It's amazing momentum. And before Corona hit, I had already put together this course and, um, you know, intended to be a virtual mm -hmm. course and it had one price point attached to it. And I sat on it for a couple of weeks because I was like, you know what, Keyshawn, people are struggling right now. And the last thing I want to do is take this opportunity away from someone because you know the price right. point is too high so what I did is I kind of just went back into my little mental laboratory and mixed it around a little bit and came up with something that is was very affordable for people and I had the price point is un under 40 bucks to be able to just get an intro to meditation and the response that I'm getting from people is so amazing and it's important like you said to recognize that when you're introducing a new practice into your life, a new habit, there's going to be a lag. You know, there's going to be a mm -hmm. learning curve. There's going to be some days where it's better, some days where it's not so good. There's going to be days where you're like, I'm zenned out, I'm focused, I'm like mm -hmm. floating on a cloud. There's going to be other days where you're like, ah. Was trying to figure out that that <laughs> right? That's not, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, you know, exactly. Mm -hmm, either mm -hmm. way, it can go either way. And, you know, then of course, there's somewhere in between. And I find that 
with breath work, like you mentioned, and with taking deep breaths and even taking a pause in your day to just say, when's the last time I took like four Mm -hmm. or five deep breaths, let alone, like Mm -hmm. you said, 11, you know, and recognizing the benefits that it has on the body. I think that the world that we're in right now needed a huge pause, you know, for a (laughs) lot of reasons. We needed no. a pause and we weren't going to take it no. on our own, you know, necessarily. It wasn't going to happen. It's like, oh, I'll get that later. Mm-hmm. I'll get that later. And so I found that during this time, you know, of COVID, this quarantine, that a lot of folks who are in this particular field of coaching and emotional wellness and mental health and you know, mindfulness and all this spiritual woo-woo shit, it's like we're mm-hmm. thriving right now. Are you having yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, definitely. I mean, people, whether well, people are either reaching out or just saying, I, I, I want, I need, mm-hmm. I want support. Um, or um, as you see a lot on social media, a lot of us are putting a lot of um, information out there. Um, and people are mm-hmm. really responding to it this time because it is needed. Right. It's needed more than ever. Um, right. So, yeah. Right. So, Definitely yeah. taking that pause. I mean, I, you're right. This has caused us to pause and reflect um, so mm-hmm. hard. <laughs> what are what are some things that you know that you can share that have come up for you, like as you're reflecting during this this time where we're in a position where we have to mm-hmm. be with ourselves. We don't have the the luxury of busyness as much as we would have in the past. What are what are some things that you're learning about yourself? In this uh, Interesting you say that. <laughs> um, it's, mm-hmm. It was one of those where first it was um, like I had to learn how to stop and pause. Um, I think because definitely I'm, I'm always on the go, always on the go. There's, you know, there's my nine to five and then there's, you know, my coaching business and then then there's the friends and the family, etc. You know, so just always moving, 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 moving. And then all of a sudden, boom, everything just stopped. And yep. Freedom is one of my values. And this hit hard mm. in the beginning because it really, it, it really um, put a damper on that value of freedom. So then really mm-hmm. had to just sit back and say, what's, what's going on? Like, why am I angry? <laughs> like, why, why am I really uh, about this? Like, why am I? <laughs> why am I? Why am I <laughs> exactly. talking about somebody? All they said is like, all they said was the outside is closed, but I mean, you know. Exactly, uh, right? Yeah. So I've, actually, yeah, I was grieving, yeah. right? And had to understand mm-hmm. that, like, okay, so I have to go through my stages of grief, right? Which is denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then acceptance. Um, mm-hmm. And then really understanding, like, what, 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 what's going on here? Where I didn't, there was moments where I didn't want to do anything. I just want to just kind of lay on the couch and yeah. just watch TV and just be mm-hmm. in that. Um, and then there was a moment of like, oh, no, I can't sit here and do this. I need to I need to then how can I be supportive and, and help and do and, and do what, what I'm here to do? Um, mm-hmm. And so there's that mix of of, OK. Yes, I could help and support and do, but in what way and making sure that I take care of myself in the process, too. Um, so. Right. So it, it's kind of all of that. But then also just remembering that. What are some of my go-tos, my self-care go-tos? And one of them is music. Love music. Love to sing. Mm -hmm. I miss Mm -hmm. actually doing voice lessons. And I do voice lessons for myself. Not even for anyone. Not not to go in there and sing. Just for myself. Because to me, it's it's like, it's it's my, music is my, I say it's my therapy. So I'm like, well, I can't really, I mean, I could do the virtual voice lessons to my instructor, but um, it's not the same. So, okay, let me, I, I had a guitar and I've been wanting to play guitar for years. I had a guitar in the, in the, in the garage for like two years. I said, well, let me pick this up. Um, went online mm. and, and did some research. I just went on Thumbtack <laughs> and, and, right? <laughs> hey, Thumbtack. <laughs> and, and like, um, quote unquote, audition to um, instructors and, and then, stuck with one and I'm in like my fourth or going to be my fourth session and just enjoying music again in a different way yeah. in a different space that's so, yeah. so beautiful in a different yeah. space yeah it's so it's almost I like pause like... and then pivot 
Mm-hmm. Pause and pivot. Yes. It's like, don't pause and sit and mm-hmm. sulk and sink. You know what I mean? Into the sunken place, mm-hmm. literally. Like, don't go there. Um, but like you said, you m- moving through the stages of grief, because essentially I, I too can fully relate to freedom being one of my values. It's mm. freedom is my foundation. You know, it's the having the ability to move and flow and go and be and do and having that flexibility is so important to me. And so to have the restraint, you know, of, well, you can't go the places you usually go, including outside. And initially I had a very similar experience where we're mm. like, hold up, hold up now. Um, right, right. Like, For how long? <laughs> how long? I can't. How long is outside going to exactly, be closed? Exactly. Right, exactly. Right. Because I, okay, <laughs> now, we don't like bondage right, right, as right. a people. Okay, so you know what I'm saying. Unless right, it's exactly. consensual by choice and a whole other conversation, but in this instance, hey, in this instance, I didn't ask for that. So, how long is this gonna last? And so, yeah, going into that space of like, well, now I'm mad, and then you know, I've 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 watched, mm-hmm, I finished mm-hmm. Netflix. You know, I've seen mm-hmm. all that I'm going to see here. So I've I've vegged out enough and just getting to that point where I'm like, no, Keyshawn, there's got to be, there's something Mm -hmm. else you can be doing with this time. And a lot of it was pivoting my perspective to say, okay, how can I look at this? I can look at this as a restriction or I can look at this as an opportunity. You know, I can look at this as a limitation or I can look at this as an opportunity and say, wow, how many people are in front of their screens right now? How many people are going through this same, you know, like you said, the cycles of grief, the stages of grief, and have no clue Mm -hmm. how to cope, have no Mm -hmm. idea where to begin. And to see, you know, myself in them and say, oh, actually, I can help with that. Right. I got right. exactly what you need. I don't have to chase. I don't have to chase you. I don't have to sell you. I don't have to do shit. All I got. Oh, I'm here. Isn't that, isn't here that great, right? I got it. And it's a beautiful thing. It's like mm-hmm. an answer to prayer. And so it took me a second to kind of get to that place of acceptance, where I was actually able to say, like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful because this is a full manifestation. It is not at all the way that I expected it to look. But I know the feeling that I'm having right now doing the work that I'm doing and making the impact that I'm making. That's the feeling that I wanted, you know, mm. that I was reaching for. And now having that manifest is just like, oh, yeah. Right, this is right. This is you know, yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> and like, I mean, one of the things also for me that, that um, so long, long time ago, like I, I used to, I was also an adjunct instructor at a college for about seven years. And. And also one of the things that I that I remember, like I miss certain things, like because I was able to pause, like I miss teaching, I miss, mm-hmm. you know, that aspect. And yeah. and what I did is like with with the group of of clients that I had, I said, you know, do you want to read a book? Like, do you want to do read a book together? Like, do you want to like a book club? And and oh. and um, I read the four ele- excuse me the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz um, a while ago, and I said, mm-hmm. "Would you want to, mm-hmm. you know, do that again?" Uh, or or not? Well, I said it to myself, but then now I'm like, you know, you know, yeah. former clients, would you want to read it as a group? And it's about five of us that just um, get, mm-hmm. get together for the actually this Wednesday is the last session of like four weeks of just doing that, and it got me into not only rereading the book, which is also a good thing, and also two is that. Mm-hmm. I was able to really get into my kind of teaching, uh, put on my teaching hat um, as well. So then therefore, yes. literally I put a PowerPoint, you know, for each each uh, session, a PowerPoint with, with mm-hmm. um, you know, with um, sayings and, and questions and polls mm-hmm. and um, like all of that. So it was like, you know what, let me, let me, what else can I do? Right. So that was kind of get into some of the things that I've been missing. And I think that that was a great, uh, that was a good yeah. thing out of all of this. It's like, you know, pause and then again, yeah. pivot. Mm-hmm. And pivot. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and I mean, it serves as a space for us to just remember, you know, the remember the things that we picked up once upon a time and then we put them mm-hmm. down for one reason or another, you know, time or energy or a focus was no longer available for that particular thing. But it's not like we're not interested, 
you know, we're now like, okay, I've done, I've organized my calendar, <laughs> right? I've built that, okay, I said that, what's the, I sent letters to my pen pals, I bought cards, I dropped shit off of the Goodwill, I put, you know, I've done everything, the refrigerator is yep. full, what else can I do? And it's like, remember that other mm-hmm. thing that you used to really be into like mm-hmm. book clubs or teaching and so I'm feeling that with this course you know with having a group of 10 people all at once and they are very much like my students you know they're some of them are clients that I've been working with before and some of them are you know new people that I've just you know mm-hmm. connected with just through social media and um, I'm finding myself like just like a scientist behind my computer like <laughs> nice. what else can we learn you know and it's it's exciting. And so I know that so much is going to come from this. And this has been an intention for me to build life classes, to build a life school, really to build a system of training for adults to be able to learn these practices that we didn't get (laughs) in school. You know, we didn't learn how to, no one taught us. I don't remember, you know, Mrs. Dumont in the seventh grade saying, okay, guys, Today, we're going to learn how to breathe. Today, right, we're going right. to learn how to take mm-hmm. care of yourself. Today, we're going to learn how to love our body. Keyshawn, like, you better we preach. Knew, we knew that. <laughs> <laughs> we do none of that. <laughs> so, I, you know, I know that I have a calling on my life to be a leader in that space. And so, I enjoy, you know, having conversations like this one with other people out there who who are picking up that, you know, that same instrument, you know, so to speak, and picking up that same, answering that call to say, okay, how can I show up for myself by showing up in spaces where I can heal myself Mm -hmm. and also allow me to show up for others, you know, at the same time, and just to be really just a living example of what leadership looks Mm -hmm. like, of what mindfulness looks like, of what self-care looks like, of what confidence looks like, because, if you don't know, you don't know, you know, and my intention is to inspire people and to empower them with information, with concepts, with practices that they can pick up and they can exactly. carry on their own, you know, and I'm there to, to guide the process. So yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's beautiful work that we get to do. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit as we move into the second sure. segment of our conversation and- Time for a break, time for a breather. One thing that we often forget to do as we move throughout our lives, throughout our day, is to breathe. So I invite you right now to allow three deep, intentional breaths to enter and exit your body. And by the time you're done, we will be ready to continue. Thank you so much for listening. And this is the part of the mm-hmm. podcast that I like to call complete the sentence. And what I like to do is I have a couple sentence prompts that I kind of throw out there. And I invite you to take up again, as much or as little space as you like, as you, mm. as you complete these, these phrases. And um, they're definitely meant to, to really give you a moment to to pause and and consider. So the first one is, I know I've made an impact when. I know I made an impact when there is change. Mm. And that change comes mm-hmm, you're like, ooh, mm-hmm. I touched something. I touched that person. You know, you can see it. They show you that the work is happening. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I am happiest <laughs> when... Um, I am happiest when there is creativity or in a creative space. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I know I'm being supported when I know I'm being supported when 
Ooh, that's an interesting one. <laughs> let me let me pause and reflect on that one. Mm. Yeah, take your time. Yeah. I know I'm being supported when um, when things magically happen without my input. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that good, good. That's that. Oh, mm-hmm. somebody, somebody mm-hmm. is looking out for me, aren't yes. they? Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's the good stuff. Yeah, when you look up and you're exactly. like, oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, I just mm-hmm. didn't even know all that good stuff was coming, but I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. So as we know, our lives eventually, you know, come to a close in the physical body and we leave behind a legacy. And I'd like to know what would you like your legacy to be? my legacy i would like my legacy to be one of of leaving like love and light to the people that have surrounded me mm. Yeah. Yeah. So as a a practitioner and leader and maybe an expert on the practice of self-love, tell us how you showed yourself (laughs) love today. Um, That one was simple. I picked up the guitar. (laughs) 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 I picked up the guitar uh, today and... um, just played for about a half hour or pretending like I knew I was playing for about a half hour and, um, and just tried different songs okay. and different um, chords um, on the guitar and just getting back mm. into just music. Like for instance, you know, India Irie, I love her for so many different reasons why she does so amazing work. I mean, she's a light worker, of course. Oh, yeah. And, you know, just getting into some of her music yeah. and strumming that. So on, on, twofold of music and then of course you know getting into another light worker's creativity and then how does that impact me as i take in those words and those and the, the song mm-hmm. absolutely i love that i love that when we start to do this work you know on ourselves when we start to step into those unfamiliar and uncomfortable spaces sometimes things come up for us when we know Mm -hmm. that we've stepped outside our comfort zone. How do you know when you've stepped outside your comfort zone? Sure. I mean, when it's like super uncomfortable, like when, um, when, when I go into the space of like, okay, I'm not I'm not liking what um <laughs> what's happening right now in my body like the fluttering mm-hmm. and the nervousness mm-hmm. around it and also then my mind is like pushing me like okay well you need to do like go and do this because it's 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 going to be uncomfortable and you're going to learn you know something from it mm-hmm. now I am a tiptoer, not a, <laughs> I'm a tiptoer into the, I'm not a deep diver. I'm not. <laughs> not a deep diver? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm a tiptoer in. That's fine. Um, That's fine. But, but definitely it's, it's, it's when I, then I fully immerse, you know, into that uncomfortable space. Um, it's definitely when I, when I know when that happens. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially when we get like on the other side of it. You know, I find like, like in the, you know, yoga practice, you know, I tell my students, Mm -hmm. find your edge, you know, the edge where the comfortable, Mm -hmm. the comfortable becomes uncomfortable, but it's not painful, but it's uncomfortable and recognizing that it's in the discomfort that the growth happens. It's in the discomfort that the transformation happens. So like leaning into that 
and recognizing, right, right. oh, I, I want to mm-hmm. back out of this. I don't like this. This doesn't feel good. I'm feeling, like you said, the flutters and I'm feeling nervous right. and I don't want to do this anymore. And it's like in that moment where, like you said, the, the mind steps in and just gives you that extra push, mm-hmm. that extra nudge, like, you got yep. this because there's so yep. much on and the some, other side. Yeah. And there's even when so you step into pain, side. so right? Yeah. There's pleasure on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. And we forget and we forget that. Right. Right. We do. We do. Because pain is mm-hmm. uncomfortable. Pain is, you know, something we don't want to mm-hmm. look at. We don't want to explore it. And we want to leave it alone. And it's sticky and it's unfamiliar. And so I think sometimes when we start to do this healing work and when we speak of, you know, light workers or people who are guides to doing this work, to finding your oh, light, yes. to remembering your light, <laughs> that there's a lot of shadow, you know, there's a lot of stuff, you know, that we have to dig through and peel back the layers. And, you know, one of my good friends says, you know, when we're peeling back the layers of ourselves. They're not thick layers mm, like bark on a tree. Like they're that. like rice paper, tiny little layers that have to be handled so delicately and the beauty is when we start to peel them back and start to do mm-hmm. the work, the discomfort kind of starts to dissipate, you know, and it's right. like, oh, okay, I, maybe I'll go a little deeper next right. time, you know, maybe, maybe I'll go a little, a little further next time. So is there a word or a phrase that when you hear it and when you say it makes you feel powerful? Mm. If so, what is that? It is... <laughs> An image is actually coming to my head, but it's it's the word. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's fine. I had somebody sing a song so one time when I asked that, that question. To, to, so uh, mine. Whatever, um, whatever comes. And um, okay. so do you know the opening scene in Sound of Music? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, 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 I was just watching it three days ago. <laughs> Oh, oh nice. I was, I was doing work and I put it on the background mm-hmm, of Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Yes, my yeah. I mean, I grew up watching it too. But yeah, oh so that yes. scene where she's on the hill, or in the hills, right? And it's just so beautiful with greenery and oh, yeah. the mountains yeah. and just being there with nature and, yeah. and like literally like arms are out and twirling and doing a whole bunch of things. So that's actually the image that comes to mind of being mm-hmm. powerful because there's something of of standing there alone yeah. and having fun and being childlike mm. that's powerful yes <laughs> yes oh i love that that's such a good one oh it's such a beautiful visual and it it mm-hmm. i can i can be right there on that right? with maria just like <laughs> ah taking in the world and I don't care. I'm supposed to be at the convent, mm-hmm. but I'm late. I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm in this moment. I'm having this moment. Let me have this moment. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's such a good one. Oh, man. Well, this has been yes, thank a, you pleasure, so much. a pleasure to chat with you. I, you are, I can honestly say you are the first guest who has actually reached out to oh, me. <laughs> um, to connect. And I'm so glad that you did. You know, I've, I've reached out to people and, you know, I can, everybody that I've invited to the podcast has thankfully said yes in the last, you know, three years. And I started oh, recording lovely. this part, podcast in the front seat of my car. Nice. And literally that's how I started. It was at a time in my life where I was at one of those uncomfortable transitional moments where the universe mm, was like, girl, mm. your life's about to change. And I was like, okay, well, um, (laughs) I wasn't ready for all that, but I'll take it. And I would have just really dope conversations with friends anytime I was driving or in my car. And I was spending a lot of time in my car. And one day a friend said, you know, there's this app that you can use and you can record from your Mm. phone and you can record with other people. You should try it. And so one day I just turned it on and just kind of started talking to myself. And what came of that was these soapbox sessions where I'm just, you know, sharing ideas. And really, it's more of a channeling experience that happens when I get centered and grounded in that space Mm. where 
the ancestors and angels just kind of speak through and the messages that come, you know, reach everyone that they're supposed to reach. And so I started to open up those conversations to include friends and other practitioners. And then I started to reach outside of my comfort zone Mm. and reach out to people that I connected with on social media. So when I got your message, I was so grateful that you reached yes. out, and I'm so glad. Yes, well, that thank we got you so much, Shonda. Thank in, you for just doing this, this way. Work. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 really. Um, mm. I don't have words, you know. It's it's really kind of like it's coming from my heart right there, or you know, emotional. Mm. You know, it's it's. Thank you for mm. for really putting the energy, mm-hmm. and the time, and the focus, and doing this work doing the light work um, in the way that you're just showing up in the world in the space and of course with your your course and everything else so thank you for for having me to the lab absolutely it is my my pleasure my pleasure the sometimes when i end the podcast i like to end Mm. with a little you know read from a deck of cards and i didn't bring one with me today Mm. and something told me I didn't need to because I had a feeling something was going to come to me just in the conversation that we had together. So the message that's coming through is take time as you go. Paulus, take time as you go, as you go forward, as you move forward, as you continue to lead, as you continue to create, as you continue to do this work, Mm -hmm. take time as you go for yourself to pour into yourself, to fill your cup, to make sure that you are covered, that you are protected. Allow yourself to be guided, allow yourself to be led and know that you are in the right place right now. Mm, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. (laughs) This is so lovely. Thank you so much. This is so great. So, so great. Well, I am going to release this conversation and just express a sincere gratitude for it. And this was such a great way to connect. And um, yeah, may the rest of your Thank day you. just be blessed yes, and yes, blissful we will. always. Thank you so much. And and yes. in Enjoy your Thank day you. as well. <laughs> okay. No problem. Take care. Thank you. I will. This is definitely an open space. This is a safe space. Feel free to take up as much or as little as you'd like yourself, however feels most natural. Um, I have talked about everything on this podcast from relationships to diet, exercise, children, spirituality, and the whole gamut. Mm-hmm. So um, so I try to let the conversation just kind of flow in a natural direction while keeping us somewhat on track um, without it feeling too much like a rigid interview. (laughs) So... It's time to wrap this up and I just want to say very sincerely thank you. You have your choice of thousands of different podcasts that you could be listening to each day and I appreciate you for choosing this to be one of them. Right now in this moment I see the light, I see the love, the wisdom, the beauty, the prosperity, the creativity and the pure joy that shines within each of you and I bow humbly before your divinity. Namaste.